Okay, hi there. Welcome to a short series of videos looking at some of the aspects of the economic aspect of the pandemic. This video is going to think about some of the industries, some of the businesses that have been affected negatively and positively by this huge external shock that we've been going through in the last couple of years. Some sectors, of course, have been hit really hard by the pandemic and associated lockdowns and public health measures. Cinemas, for example, essentially closed down in the spring and summer of 2020. If we look here at the monthly admissions in the UK for all of the cinemas taken together, you can see how, how dramatic was the, the impact in terms of, uh, of just not being able to open. And uh, admissions collapsed, of course, uh, to zero. And then they picked up only modestly uh, in the summer of 2020 and again in the summer of 2021. The construction sector is highly cyclical, uh, but then has been hit by the pandemic. This is an interesting chart. It shows an index of construction sector output uh, from, 90, from 2006, I see onwards. The blue line shows public housing. That's things like uh, building new councillor houses and things. The orange line shows private sector house building. And the grey line shows new infrastructure. And you can see in 2020, there was a big fall in output, particularly of public housing. Infrastructure spending, in a sense, has been driving the sector during the recovery phase into 2021. And obviously, businesses involved in travel and tourism were badly hit. A couple of charts here from British Airways. The first one shows the number of passengers carried globally by BA. And you can see that after many years of growth, uh, the number fell by about 75 percent from 44 million plus in 2019 to just under 12 million in 2020. And that uh, that external shock, that demand side effect tipped British Airways from making uh, a tidy profit, about one and a half billion pounds in 2019, into making a nearly four billion pound loss in 2020. And again, think about in your revision, think about how you can be using maybe supply and demand diagrams or cost and revenue diagrams to analyse what's going on. A lot of fast food retailers had to shut down initially, gradually reopening. Not all of them were geared towards uh, online deliveries. Greg's, a fast growing business, saw its revenues fall very sharply in 2020. Uh, bus companies, of course, bus and coast companies hit hard by travel bans and by lockdowns. This is the operating profit of National Express Group, which was raising profits, increasing their returns, but making about £5 million a week in 2019, but in 2020 lost a £1 million a week. And I think National Express has just been bought uh, recently by stage Stagecoach in a, in a takeover bid. And obviously sectors such as gyms and hotels, theatres, restaurants, are obviously badly hit. This is a nice simple chart showing the revenue of the gym group in the UK. I think it's Britain's second biggest low-cost gym. The revenue is falling from nearly £200 million, pounds, $200 million a year sorry, in 2019 to just about half that in 2020. So in the exam, uh, being aware of the context, the impact of the pandemic, I think is quite important. You may well be able to use supply and demand analysis showing, for example, an inward shift of demand for a business negatively affected. What are the consequences for prices, for the production, and obviously for revenues? Don't forget, though, know, you can't show profit directly on a supply and demand diagram. What about the impact on the demand for complementary services? So as uh, people work from home, demand for office space fell, um, and that caused a fall in demand for businesses serving busy city centres such as takeaway coffee shops and sandwich bars. But equally, uh, as people move towards ordering things online, the demand for warehouse space increased in the UK. So think about complementary and substitute relationships, quite important. You might want to think about supply side shifts, uh, worker shortages, people being ill and able to work, uh, shortages of raw materials and component parts globally. What are the consequences for supply and also the elasticity of supply of businesses hoping and looking to grow because many businesses did see revenues go up and sales go up during the pandemic. For the higher knowledge application and analysis marks, 
If you want to use diagram, I suggest cost and revenue curve analysis. Uh, you can show, for example, an inward shift of, of average revenue and marginal revenue impact on profit and output um, for companies negatively affected. Conversely, an outward shift of AR and MR for sectors that benefited from a surge in demand. Uh, what about the changes in cost? The government brought in the furlough wage subsidy scheme. What impact did that have on the firm's costs? But equally, many businesses suffered shortages of key raw materials, driving up the world price, causing their costs to rise. Some exam boards test the concept of the shutdown price, where price falls below average variable cost. That might be well worth revising as part of your understanding of the pandemic. And also, uh, think about fast-growing businesses, Netflix, Peloton, Zoom, uh, and many others, the extent to which those businesses were able to quickly achieve economies of scale during the pandemic. Uh, let me just model for you the effect of a fall in demand. I'll just take you through a quick illustration here of how you can show how the pandemic may have caused some businesses to move from making a tidy profit, shown here at output Q1, price P1, average cost AC1. So they're making a good profit there. But in the, in the event of a big fall in demand, average revenue shifts to AR2. Let me draw the marginal revenue curve on there for you. And that led to a fall in the profit maximising output to Q2. You can only charge price P2 now, but your costs are now AC2 at that output level. And of course, you're now making a loss shown by the green shaded area. Interesting point here is that as output goes down, if you still have fixed costs, then the average fixed cost goes up and it makes it harder for businesses to turn a profit. So that was the, that was the profit before and the green area shows the loss after the pandemic. Of course, the key point here is that businesses aren't static. So many, many businesses have had to respond to the external shock of the pandemic. They respond to very difficult situations, both commercially and also the issues facing their staff. Uh, here are just one or two points about some of those business responses. First of all, I think we have seen an acceleration of digital innovation. Lots of businesses have had to, by circumstance, shift their resources towards and invest in remote working, giving their staff the tools, the equipment to be able to work from home. Uh, many, uh, it's now estimated that working from home is forecast to be just under one fifth, 17% of all the hours worked in the UK from 2023 onwards. So it looks like there's a permanent shift towards different hybrid models of working. Many businesses uh, who didn't have an online presence, didn't have a delivery system in place, had to uh, move quickly to digitise their marketing, to bring our e-commerce systems up to scratch, to expand online sales and delivery. Uh, retailers, for example, um, restaurants developing um, an online capability, but also perhaps investing in cloud kitchens where you can centralise your production of food at lower cost rather than keeping open uh, venues which uh, are quite costly to maintain. In the global context, uh, many businesses are trying to shorten their global supply chains. So, you know, shutdowns in China and Vietnam and Bangladesh can often cause uh, shortages of absolutely key essential raw materials. So quite a few businesses now are looking to shorten their global supply chains to source more of them from, from their own region of the, of the world. And that can be a cause of deglobalization. My third point in terms of business response, I think, is a really key one for you from an exam point of view, that many businesses you know, simply aren't able to profit maximise during a pandemic, during a recession. Uh, don't forget, GDP in the UK fell by nearly 10% in 2020. So many businesses have probably shifted away from profit maximisation to other objectives. The obvious one to mention here would be revenue max, or bringing in more price discrimination designed to generate that key cash flow to keep the business running. A lot of businesses have looked to cut their costs, uh, you know, close certain factories, close loss-making restaurants, downsize the business to cut their cloth accordingly. It's called rationalisation to, uh, to get them through the recession. And some businesses have demerged some of their operations again to avoid diseconomies of scale. This is a nice quote from the Financial Times. 
many larger businesses are looking to vertical integration to smooth disruptions such as those caused by the global semiconductor crisis. Intel making big investments in the European Union, uh, less than independence on Asian manufacturers. Of course, some businesses grew during the pandemic. So although other firms saw big declines in revenue, other businesses saw their sales soar. Virtual fitness and home gyms is a good example. This chart shows the increase in percentage terms in sales of, of different items of home gym equipment in the UK in 2020. And this percentage changed. So clearly, you know, there weren't many steppers sold in 2019, a lot more sold in 2020. So it's a huge percentage change. But look at the, look at the numbers here. You know, there was a 500% increase in sales of treadmills, 1700% um, increase in sales of weights, and I know myself, having bought a couple of these, a 2,000% increase in sales of exercise bikes. So a huge increase in sales of home gym equipment, especially when, when many gyms were closed. Online grocery surged, of course, as you know. And this chart's interesting. It shows the weekly online grocery delivery capacity. In other words, how many people each week each major supermarket can deliver to. And you can see the figures have gone up. Um, before the pandemic. In March 2020, Tesco's was serving about half a million customers a week online. A year later, 1.3 million. Asda more than doubled. Uh, Sainsbury's nearly doubled their uh, online grocery capacity. Waitrose, from a low base, did even better. Ocado, over a third of a million people. So what you have here is a story of supermarkets moving heaven and earth, employing more people, um, hiring more vans, think about the labour market consequences, um, trying to increase the capacity of their online grocery delivery services. Whether or not it's profitable is another issue, but certainly a major aspect of the pandemic. And from the financial point of view, uh, when was the last time you used cash? Many more people now using contactless payments. This chart shows the monthly point of sale payments volumes of contactless debit and credit cards in the UK. And you can see that the acceleration in, in, in the number has been absolutely staggering, 1.2 billion uh, per month. And so for some businesses, uh, the pandemic caused demand to increase. Let's go back to our previous diagram. Businesses making a profit here at P1, uh, average cost AC1. Uh, if sales increase, the average revenue curve shifts out. Let's draw the marginal revenue curve that goes with it. And assuming costs stay the same, a profit maximising firm will expand output to Q2. They can charge a higher price P2, many did. The average cost is shown as AC2, and therefore they can make a really, really high profit. So this would be a good analysis diagram to draw to show the effect on revenues and profits of businesses that have benefited from some of the demand changes, the pattern of spending changes we've seen in the last few years. In my second video, I'll take a look at the impact of the pandemic on some of the key macroeconomic indicators for the UK. But thanks for joining in this video. Stay safe, stay curious, stay happy, and see you again sometime soon.